Welcome to the I Got Fired podcast, where we help people who've been fired or afraid that they might be. My name is Tom Spiggle, and I am uh, thrilled to be joined today by Shinny Rutt. She is the founder of Laurel Virtual Solutions Consulting. She provides career strategy, executive, executive resume writing, cover letter writing. She optimizes your LinkedIn profiles for businesses, uh, small businesses and for individuals. She's been doing this for over 17 years. Uh, she, and she's got experience in recruitment and human resources. She has a proven track record of success. Uh, she's also an advisor and influence on social media, the human ha capital community, and is a Forbes contributor. So uh, welcome, Shannon. Thank you, Tom. Welcome. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Excellent. So why don't, let's, let's start with um, just talking about the career services field, you know, because, uh, you know, I know kind of when we're thinking about like the legal services, like there are all different kinds of lawyers, right? I think a lot of people think, oh, you're a lawyer, you can do all lawyer stuff. And that's not necessarily true. There are specialties within the legal field. And, and it's really sort of new to me too, but as I'm learning within the career services, you know, there are people like you who will help with the resumes and LinkedIn. There are people who are like, they do the life coaching. There are people who do their, you know, more of the career coaching. Can you just talk a little bit about the career service industry and like how you fit into it? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> um, a little, a little context of my career, I guess, would make some, sure make sense if I back absolutely a little bit. Um, I, I, I fell into human resources. And interestingly enough, a lot of folks find themselves in that situation just by default of career choice, etc. And um, after I had, I had gone into some retail uh, management uh, training, I had been offered or appointed, I guess, <laughs> the, uh, the HR um, responsibility area. So I took that on and, and just really enjoyed it. And then when I decided my retail days were coming to an end, I wanted to continue, uh, I wanted to continue the HR uh, work. And uh, that's when I broke, broke into the recruitment industry and staffing and worked for many, many uh, companies along the way and worked in large volume staffing, every industry, um, legal, tech, manufacturing, labor, whatever it was we needed, we, we staffed and hired for. And we moved into some generalist role work and did some really large scale hiring for folks like Amazon and Starbucks. And then um, when it came to a point where I wanted to pivot and do something a little bit different, I just decided to take a lot of my career coaching, interview guidance, resume writing, uh, skills and incorporate them into my own company. So um, I just became connected with social media, networking. LinkedIn really wasn't uh, a huge presence back when I was in recruiting at the time, but then it became a big deal um, and met some really great people that helped me along the way. And here we are today. So uh, I think someone with my type of expertise is uh, you know is is helpful in certain aspects where a lot of companies don't have the ability to outsource those services and I'm just really fortunate that I have a global reach I work with folks all over the country and uh, love what I do that's great. So talk to me a little bit about um, what it means to be a recruiter. I think some people have had experience working with recruiters, but a lot haven't. You know, so what is that like? What do people who are looking for a job need to know about recruiters? Recruiting is really hard. And, uh, you know, in order to be at the top of your game, you know, it's it's of your best interest to figure out the smartest best way to be efficient and fill those job orders and the most obviously the best way to do that is to find the preferred candidate and beat your competitor to the punch so uh you know time is of the essence and you know you really you really need to uh for longevity and 
I guess, sustaining your, your client relationships, really uh, having the, the first person be the best person for the job is, you know, my, my advice is mm-hmm. just to pre-screen and find the right candidate. And if it doesn't help you or it doesn't help the client at all if you're just sending them five people that are qualified, you need to find the person that is the best for the job. So if I am looking for a job and a a recruiter reaches out to me, what's the best way for me to approach working with a recruiter? How can I help him or her make sure I get to the right job opening? Uh, Well, a a lot of uh, post COVID, a lot of, a lot of things have moved to the virtual platform, but I would say at least, at least, Mm -hmm. at least get a calendar, at least get a calendar appointment or a, you know, a, a, a virtual appointment and really just get to know the recruiter and say, this is who I am, this is what I've done, this is where I want to go, help me. Yeah, because yeah. I guess you're doing them a service too, right? Because they're looking for people. So if you've got a skill set that can be helpful, um, you're, helping, you're helping them out, right? Because they got to, like you said, you've got to fill the slots as a recruiter. That's right. So, but I feel um, I'm grateful that I had a I had a really good recruiting career because that really fortified a lot of my industry experience. So, my versatility with clients is is all is is all all encompassing industries. I could be having a client in IT. And, you know, the next week I can have a vice president of marketing. So, you know, I, I, I love the ability to be able to switch gears. It's very challenging and keeps me on my toes. And I just, I learn so much. We're, we have such a limited window of opportunity with each client that we have, because obviously we're, we're mission focused. Time is of the essence. The turnaround time needs to be efficient and fast they came to me for help i need to get them on their way and give them the tools they need so got it so let's say i come to you and i'm like shinny i just got i just got fired let's say i'm i'm um you know was fairly high level marketing but i'm not i'm not you know c-suite level yet i just lost my job i've come to you for help what are how do you start what is your process like well what what we do First, when someone reaches out to me for assistance and you know help, you know, <laughs> it's we we get a we get a getting to know you or a deep dive call as I like to call it scheduled, and it's really just me getting to know you. Uh, I prefer that if I don't know them and they're not connected to me previously, that they at least send me a backstory or we, we get connected somehow on either LinkedIn or a resume or some kind. So I have some context and I really just say the floor is yours. I want to hear all about you, your career and what's the dream. What do we want to do? And we, we just come up with a, a plan of attack. And then what do you, is your, is your first step to look at resume and, or do you do resume LinkedIn at the same time? Like what it like, you know, what are kind of the specifics? Like, where do you start with your scalpel? Which is the first place you go? Well, the, the, the resume is really where we start because you're going to need, you're going to need a a really effective resume to move forward in any of the application process. A, a lot of applications won't won't accept, you know, your application if you don't attach a copy of your resume or um, a, or a, some some ask for a LinkedIn profile link, but more or less it's really still the resume. So we overhaul the resume first and then <clears throat> many of my clients are mid-level to senior to senior level to C-suite executive, uh, so they are they are incredibly focused on having everything be accurate and up to date, 
and LinkedIn and resume are two different things, but we, we really, uh, my process is we start at the resume Got and it. We, uh, we get a first draft. We review the first draft together. We final draft it and then we move right in. The LinkedIn is another phone call, another conversation. Um, and then we just proceed from there. How are they um, like the resume? Well, let me ask you this resumes like what kind of mistakes do you see people making on their resume? What are you looking for? What are kind of best practices? Um, well, <clears throat> I see three and four page resumes that are just it, it, it it almost from a first glance to me appears that they copy and pasted their job description right <laughs> under <You're> right. agency <laughs> company. <laughs> mm. And um and that that's 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 not what we want to do. <laughs> so too many bullet points, um, too long, and a lot of redundancy. Um they don't realize they do it but if you scroll down and they have three or four years of or two to say two to four um you know time time slots of you know career experience they they tend to duplicate the language because they just aren't savvy it's very very hard to write your own resume in defense of the client sure uh, i had to outsource my resume when i needed it done because it's it's a very unique process that's very individual and you yourself it's very hard for the individual to be able to articulate their best their best qualifications their their metrics what they bring to the table no i think that's a great point i'm sure you know like we're all too close to our own lives right to be able to judge it you know, kind of objectively and see how somebody else across the table, you know, might be looking at our resume. Uh, I think that makes a lot of sense that it'd be helpful just to have, <clears throat> you know, I don't care how sophisticated you are to have another set of eyes, somebody who knows the knows the industry be able to be like, no, 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 you don't need the last two pages, you know, let's re, you know, let's, 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 let's edit this language and kind of streamline it. That makes a lot of sense to me. And then what about LinkedIn? So like, how is LinkedIn different from the resume? Like, how do you, what is the process there? And what mistakes do you see people making on LinkedIn? Okay, so LinkedIn is, is a whole different project. And I think when LinkedIn first came out, everybody had an impression of their profile being, needing to be identical to their resume. So what I would, what I still see today is a lot of folks taking the, the language and the, the co copy and pasting their resume into the template of the, of the LinkedIn profile, and LinkedIn is, in my opinion, it's a little more challenging to to work with as a as a professional who, is is responsible for and and, and optimizes it fully. Um, Oh, let's see. Um, LinkedIn is very interactive and current and it needs to speak of your personality. Um, I, I like to write my, my LinkedIn optimization and I like to optimize, I like to LinkedIn optimize my clients in first person language. So um, we need to be crystal clear about your, your completeness barometer um, and your headline and just have all of, all of your ducks in a row. There are so many, um, missed opportunities in LinkedIn, if you will, because a lot of folks just, they put the bare minimum in there and they think, okay, I'm good. I've got a couple of hundred connections. I follow a few people, but leveraging LinkedIn is a whole nother learning aspect that I work with my clients on. Um, it is social media. So it is, it is like Facebook. It is, it is like Twitter and you, you only get out of it what you put into it. So, uh, I, I'm finding LinkedIn to be super important today because 
it sometimes is the first place a, a prospective employer will go. So they take a look at your social media presence. Are you are you um, argumentative with your conversation? Your you know this is where your your social media presence and your your etiquette come into play. Um, and just you know we, we we go through and we refine it and we we expand on your about section and we really highlight all the areas of your career that's interesting so a lot of times employers go to linkedin first you said they'll 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 do that before they dive into your resume is that it can well with with i see that a lot with the senior senior and executive c-suite folks because that level of that level of career is very fluent in linkedin and they will i've actually seen this in real time when i've been when i've been working on a client with optimization i've actually seen their messenger go and are you available for you know can you call me i have a job that i may may you may be interested in can you can you please email me your resume if you're not busy you know so all of it, it, it all has to do with the settings the algorithm your presence keywords um, but it's really a completeness barometer um, linkedin has a uh to be ultimate completeness on linkedin it's called an all-star and that just means that you tick off all the boxes, you meet and exceed all the completeness barometer. Um, and many, many people, I'd say eight out of 10 people are, are not meeting that. And I, God, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was say that, that directly impacts your ability to be seen on LinkedIn in the, in the sea of millions and millions of, of people. Um, for instance, when I ask my my clients how they found me, um, they they tell me nine times out of ten they'll say I looked you up on LinkedIn and I, I said well how did you do that, and they said we typed in executive resume writer and you, your name came up on the on the top search. So if you have your algorithm and your keywords correct, and you are complete and you meet the minimum criteria, which I teach my clients about, you'll be successful on LinkedIn, you'll be seen. Right. Um, and and LinkedIn, is really, LinkedIn is really about engagement. You have got to engage to be able to connect better. Yeah, no, that's what I was gonna, well, two questions for you. One. The all-star designation, is that something like that that like professionals like you talk about, or is that LinkedIn designate somebody that, all-star? That is a LinkedIn that that is that is a LinkedIn barometer of completeness, if you will. Got it. Um, and what do you think of people? You said like eight out of ten people, that's not really optimized. What do you find people are leaving off? What prevents people from getting that designation? I, th I think they just skip sections. They, uh, you know, they don't have a profile picture. They skip their about section. Um, their their work history, their employment history is incomplete. They they leave off of their education. They don't have any recommendations. Um, you know, it's if you're looking at a LinkedIn profile, just there's a lot of holes in the in the in the profile. So when I do assessments of LinkedIn profiles, a lot of times folks will say, I just need the resume right now. And uh, I'll take a look at their LinkedIn just to see. And, you know, I'll be honest with them. I'll say, you know, it looks good for now, but, uh, you know, I see some areas of opportunity or, you know, it's, if, if it's going to, I mean, it is really going to impact somebody's career if they um, and being seen and found and, you know, known, uh, if they're, if they're under optimized or, you know, they're underutilizing, nobody should really be underutilizing LinkedIn. 
Yeah, it would make sense to me that it's just like the return on investment. It just makes sense to do them both, right? Because like, I mean, if you're, you know, any, I mean, if you're, certainly if you're mid-level or you're your senior executive, the amount that you would pay to have that done versus the potential payoff to you is just like, it's not even close, right? I mean, why would you not do that? And, and, and another thing, it's very difficult for a lot of people to be able to uh, do themselves. So when they learn about how it looked before and how it looks now, they, they're, they're wide-eyed and very surprised because it's kind of like opening a clamshell. And right. Her, you know, um, you have to really dig down and 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 really get you know and really bring all of that goodness you know to the to the profile um and it's very very hard for an individual to really understand that so when i when i when i teach my clients about linkedin leveraging they're they and, and then i see them be successful in it you know it's it's a good feeling yeah, no, I bet. And, and you mentioned, I think, was a good point earlier that LinkedIn is a great networking tool. Like a resume is just static. I mean, you're submitting it to the job. But LinkedIn, you can participate in, in communities and start making connections. So it's really, you know, uh, it's the breach is much broader in many respects. Oh, definitely. I mean, LinkedIn is global. Your resume is a hard copy and saved on your desktop and it's, it's a piece of paper. Yeah. So, you know, if you think about the reach, you know, that LinkedIn has, it has, it has a connected me globally with so many wonderful people. And LinkedIn is where I find many of my clients. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a great, you have a great, everybody should check out uh, Shinny's LinkedIn profile because it's uh, it's next level. It's good stuff. Um, so let's so let's say we've got the resume done now. We've got the my LinkedIn profile profile um, optimized. Uh, now it's time for cover letter. How does that work? What uh, how do you deal with that? Well, I, I, I do write I, I don't write many cover letters, um, but I do if they need if they need one. Um, it's it's still a requirement out there. Um, I have my opinion about, you know, the uh, necessity of one today with, with, with LinkedIn being, you know, possibly a cover letter and a resume and yeah. a profile all in one. Um, so I, I, I do, I do wish that client, that, that employers would, would, uh, you know, let that go away a little bit. Right. <laughs> um, so, but it's not going until it goes until it goes away permanently, which I don't think it's going to. Um, I work with a customized template with each client, and we make it a beginning, a middle, and end. And we keep it simple and basic, and not overthink it, and uh, uh, you know, just get right to the point. And um, really, it's your. It's your, uh, uh, you know, it's your opportunity to speak to the hiring manager as to why you are the one they want to hire. Yeah, and I guess probably you don't want to just regurgitate your resume like you want to have it to be more targeted and, you know, add some additional value than just your resume. Right. So you, you really need to come out swinging hard in the, in the cover letter. Because yeah, you're, you know, we've cut everything else in line, and then they want a cover letter. You've got to, you've got to stand out. But how many people are reading a cover letter? <laughs> you know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, when I was a recruiter. I really didn't read cover letters because I didn't have time. I needed to get right to the resume and, um, you know, what can you do for me? Do you know A, B, and C, and D? Good. Yes. Moving on. It, you know. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're one of those, uh, old school employers. Like we asked for a cover letter, um, uh, after this, maybe we'll reconsider. But one of the things like that I look for is like, do they even submit one? 
right? Like if we saw, like, are you even following the directions on the, regardless of what your cover letter says, if I asked for a resume and a cover letter and you just give me a resume, well, you weren't even paying attention, right? To the, to the job ad. Um, and then the other thing is, is like in the, I, I'm always, um, you know, obviously as the, you know, the employer, particularly prospective employer, I have more time to, to look at it than a recruiter does. Um, but uh, do they say anything that indicates they know anything about, you know, my, my firm, you know, or the company, or is it just this sort of bland, this could apply to any employer? Like, so it's less for me when I'm looking at a cover letter, it's less about what they're going to tell me about the applicant, although I'm, I'm happy to learn more things about the applicant and more that like I see that they're paying attention and that they actually want this job. They're not looking for a job, you know, they want this job. So that tends to be how we, you know, we use it on our end. I advise my clients, if, if you're applying for a position that requires it, then then we're doing one. Yeah. If you need one. And, and once we get you a great template and the basics, you can save it to your desktop and adjust it and customize it, you know, to your to your need. But if 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 a client if if you're on Indeed or Career Builder or wherever you're going to look for a position or even on LinkedIn and it says easy apply and all they want is your resume and your 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 LinkedIn link, uh, your LinkedIn profile link, then good. But follow the instructions. Yeah. It's the easiest way to get disqualified if you don't. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and one last one last question for you before I get to like how people can find you. I know one way they can find you is on LinkedIn. Um, but what do you see? What's kind of cutting edge? What's different now? You know, in twenty twenty three, that wasn't you know true in you know twenty fifteen or even twenty twenty. How's kind of the job? Not so much a job market, but applying for a job. How have you seen that change over the past couple of years? Oh well, <laughs> um, I don't think I don't think too many people find a position in the newspaper anymore. <laughs> well, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but never say never. Um, no, I think I think the 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 process and how how job searching has has changed is it's it's just you know connected. It's internet. It's find me on LinkedIn, you know, open up a chat, um, you know, Zoom. Um, people are being interviewed via Zoom. They are, you know, Skype meetings, uh, my, Microsoft, you know, meetings, um, uh, apply. I, you know, I've seen, I've seen a lot of it go super quick with, you know, advancement with AI, artificial intelligence, chat bots, uh, go here to the you know click on to the easy apply on linkedin and you're you're right there on the website apply now follow the instructions i i, I am happy to see that the process is getting a little bit streamlined that it's not taking 30 minutes to apply for a position online it's it's a simpler template and you know do you meet this requirement um you know upload this send it <clears throat> I also think job seekers are getting smarter. They're they're networking more. Uh, they're finding a company that they're they're identifying target companies they are interested in. They are finding folks on LinkedIn that may connect them to closer to that opportunity, and starting a conversation, sending a connect request, a nice little note. I'm connected to Tom, who, who's Shenny. Um, you know, uh, I saw that you had a great job. Uh, you know, I'm feeling a little bit nervous about the position I'm in now with layoffs and such, you know, can we have a conversation? So, you know, things are moving, you know, at warp speed now, as opposed to they used to. So yeah, definitely faster and more efficient. We still have a lot of work to do there, but yeah, no, I'm sure that's true. It's uh, things do move so the job boards in particular make it so easy to apply. Um, you know, it's certainly a lot a lot different than it used to be. Can you give me um, like any particular success stories um, of people that you worked with? You know, they came in, they're looking for a job. You don't have to mention names, but just kind of, you know, how things work on your end. Uh, well, <clears throat> I worked with a. Uh, a someone I was been connected with for a really long time on social media. And then we, when LinkedIn came, we, we just followed each other and stayed in touch. And he is on the other side of the country in the West Coast. 
and reached out to me one day and I said, hey, it's been a while, how you doing? And he said, well, I, I think I need your help and um, was just being downsized from a major sports company and um, is, you know, in, in human resources and PA and recruiting and compensation and just uh, yeah, um, HR tech and just super smart. So we revamped his profile and we moved on to, uh, you know, a, a really large company and we, we, you know, pivoted him a little bit and we just got him on his way. And um, then I had another client that was a friend of mine who uh, had 30 years in um, judicial uh, clerking and uh, wanted to relocate about three hours south of here to be closer to her grandchildren and family. And uh, she, had, we, <clears throat> we, re we revamped her resume and LinkedIn and she applied for every position she applied for, she got a job interview for, and then she got all job offers, but uh, was not expecting to get her dream job with the House of Representatives for our state. So that was really exciting to see her land, you know, her dream job and, you know, have it be in her pretty much in her backyard now and where she's able to see her grandkids and just have a whole nother you know, outlet in life and still be professionally fulfilled. So it's, it's a great story. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's, you know, as you're talking, it just occurs to me that obviously being laid off or certainly being fired, it's a traumatic experience and really can be a, you know, a <clears throat> body blow to your, to your ego and self-worth, but there's really like, there's so much opportunity. There really is, you know, t take your day or two to, to cry about it, to grieve. Like it's absolutely understandable and important, but like, Working with someone like you, you could not only get another job, you could get a better job, <laughs> a better job with more pay. I mean, this could be a chance for you to build an even better life. Right, so uh, we've, I, I've had a lot of conversations with folks who have come to me and, you know, had, had a dream job, fell victim to, you know, fourth quarter layoffs and, you know, layoffs. I mean, every other day there's massive amounts of layoffs and, uh, you know, it's it's just helping them get up and stand up on their own two feet and 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 you know get a plan together. And I I do work with a lot of my clients that I'm completed with ongoing. You know, my door is always open, so um, I do have a good idea of where everybody's at that I worked with, and I do check in with them. And you know, it's it's really uh, I have a very organic you know great great relationship with my clients because they're once they're a client of mine they're you know a connection for life and you know we talk a lot so well I think that's a great point too is like just to have somebody like you you know on speed dial right like somebody if particularly if you're a professional professional level um you know because this is a, a, a never-ending process right you're always you know, got to keep things up to date. Like, you know, hopefully if you're moving the next time, it's, it's a voluntary move, but whatever, like, you know, when, when you're ready to make the move or when you have to make the move to have somebody like you who knows, right, who already knows you, knows your background, can just kind of, you know, I, I almost think of it as like, as, um, you know, like attorneys who do trust and estates, like, you know, you do the will, you do the estate, and then you just need to stay in touch, you know, because life changes, life circumstances change. You need to keep those documents up to date. And the same thing with working with a career services professional. You need to have somebody, right, that's in your corner who kind of knows your history because, you know, whenever you're ready to make that next move, you know, it'll go that much quicker the next time because you'll be like, oh, yeah, I know you. I know your strengths. I know I know what you're looking for. You know, let's hit the ground running. I, I have to agree. A lot of my a lot of my clients in the last two years, and I think we have the pandemic to – you know, thing for that is, you know, everybody has been thrown back and forth to the work from home, back to the office hybrid. There's a couple of folks that I'm keeping in touch with right now about uh, um, work from home, you know, will be coming to an end as we know it come April and May. And, you know, you're going to have to make a decision whether you're going to stay or go. And so, um, you know, folks are getting smarter 
and they are calling me up and saying, I, I don't know what's going on, but I want to be ready. And so we're doing, we're doing the, the, the work now just to make sure that they are ready to go should something happen. You know, yeah. it's like career life insurance. Like Absolutely. I think that's a great way to look at it. You know, like okay. don't, don't do it like, I mean, obviously you should do it if you get fired and you need the services, but don't wait, you know, be proactive, be ready. The sink, yeah, the ship is sinking. Right. right. You know, but think about it like, you know, when HR calls you in, right, if something's going on, like if you if you've got all your ducks in a row, like you feel sort of bulletproof. You're like, OK, you know, either this works out or it doesn't. But if it doesn't work out like, you know, I've got shinny in my back corner, you know, we're going to go find a better job. So tell me what you got. That's right. Well, this has been fantastic. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Um, tell folks if they're looking for you, how they find you. What's the best way? Uh, well, you can, oh, let me turn that off. Um, I can be reached at uh, laurelvirtualconsulting at gmail.com. I can be found via Shenny Rutt on LinkedIn. Um, and if, once you scroll down on my profile, I have a Calendly link. You can call me, you can message me, email. And there's no cost to speak to me on the phone. Um, and we, we just talk about what it is you, you know, you, you, you need, what you want, and we customize something if, if, uh, you will have a very specific need. I do offer a career fundamentals package, which encompasses everything that I think you need. <laughs> um, after many years of allocarding a lot of services, this package really seems to work for most people which includes the resume and the linkedin and the cover letter and um career coaching etc so happy to help and i work with all industries all levels of career uh, I, I do work with many hr folks that's just my space and where i've come from and know that industry well but i um uh, I, I'm happy to help anyone who needs. Well, that's yeah. great. Well, Shinny, this is the world needs more people like you. Um, I appreciate uh, appreciate your your sage advice, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll stay in touch. But thanks again for for being a, a guest. Well, thank you for having me. It was a great pleasure, and I um, I enjoyed the conversation. All right, Shinny. So we'll the, it will end it there. The editor will end it there. Um, but before I uh, turn off the record button, I just yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That was fantastic. Um, you know, we are we are getting ready to reach out. I think I mentioned this to all of our. You know, we want to be able to offer this as a service to our current clients and people are signing up with us because I think it's so. I mean, it's just a natural marriage, right? Like people come to us because they've been fired. They're having problems at work. They need a better job, right? And that's not something that's that we right. do. Um, so we'll be sending out an email to our, we have 300 some current clients uh, probably next week, just saying, hey, you know, um, if you're interested in these services, you know, we're working with some people, please, you know, reach out to us. And so hopefully we'll be sending some people your way and uh, and we'll just go from there to see how it works. I'm excited about it, though. I this is this is work I love. I'm passionate about and um, I there's there's so many larger companies out there that charge horrendous amounts of money to get to get the services that I can do. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I absolutely hate to see folks who have, you know, come to me and said, I worked with XYZ executive, blah, 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 and, you know, and they took all my money and didn't give me anything. They outsourced my resume to Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just, I, I mean, that's, that's just ridiculous and uh, um, frustrates me to no end. So, um, no, nothing is outsourced. Everything is organic. It is just me, my years of experience, what I know how to do, what I love to do. My turnaround time is very efficient. I try to get people on their way within two weeks. Yeah, no, I know. I, Mark highly recommends you, and I certainly trust Mark. And I'm, a, I'm a, 
impressed with what I've seen with you. So, um, so hopefully we'll be sending some folks your way. Um, this po- this episode, my podcast person is uh, is took took a little time off in March, so this will probably be coming out late March, early April. But we'll let you know before it comes out. And um, yeah, I'm excited about it. Are you in need of anything else from me as far as? Um pricing or anything along those lines i don't or? think so i mean like we'll just be sending people to your you know to sign up with you um uh, and then we'll let you take it from there in terms of pricing and what they want and i think you mentioned well actually well, I, well, I actually think i'm thinking about it for that for kind of the package that you recommend what's the price point for that um i'm not holding you to anything i just what's your kind of a range like if oh um um, it's basically like two to five hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Well, that's I mean, you should charge more. <laughs> that's more than reasonable for that for that kind of service. Well, um, um, you know, I I mean, I it it depends on the obviously the 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 higher the higher career level and the more C suite and executive sure. level, the more expensive it can get because it takes more time. Yeah, they're, more. They're, they are just much more time consuming individuals and, you know, just the the research end of things with making sure that we really don't miss or um, not accentuate or highlight anything that is needed because that that's a whole different ballgame of, of career coaching. And um, but yeah, I, I should I should charge more. I know. <laughs> and, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, it depends. I mean, it, it, right. I, I really I don't work with entry level people. Generally, I did in my earlier when I first started the company. I a lot of them were, you know, early like freshers and college and right and now, now it's like the big that's the big time. <laughs> it's senior C suite, you know, director, uh, CEOs. You know, I just finished up with a stockbroker guy from New York City, so. That's you great. Know. Yeah. No, no, almost, it's very rare that we work with entry level folks just because, you know, they don't, they're too young to have skin in the game to be able to hire us. So most of our folks are, are at least mid level um, or higher. So, yeah, I think that works out well. Um, well I'm excited. You-